Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and uh, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at real flow for Cinema 4D again, and we're going to be dealing with the uh, next demon in the, in the list, and the, that demon is the D spline. So let's just get on with it. Um, again, I'm going to just uh, go to the emitters, create a circle emitter. Um, I'm going to go to scene and dis uh, solver, so I can use my CUDA GPU. And I'm also going to go to the fluid and the display just to make the particles a little bit bigger so you can see them okay. And then I'm going to add, go to the real flow menu, go to demons, and I'm going to add the D spline. Now, this basically, um, this demon creates a force field along a customizable path. And um, that path can be defined by a spline. So, um, what am I going to do? Okay, first things first, let's go into our uh, front view and I'm just going to uh, choose the pen tool, that's fine, and I'm just going to create two points and um, that'll do for now. I'm just going to make it very simple to begin with and I'm uh, going to select this point and I'm going to zero it out on the x-axis and same with this point I'm gonna zero it out on everything okay cool so we go back to our other things so now you can see we've got this spline pointing straight up and in fact let's make this a little longer drag this point up okay so what I'm gonna do now is grab my emitter and I'm gonna Go to its coordinates and I'm going to flip it so it's pointing upwards uh, 180 degrees and I'm also going to zero that out as well so it's right at the bottom of the spline there. Now if we hit play now not a lot's happening and um, we need some more time on our timeline as well let's give it five seconds yeah that should be enough time for us um, and that's because we need to go to our D spline and go to the demon spline tab and it's asking for a spline object so we can grab our spline and drag that into this field here so let's just uh, hit play and see what happens um, just just a note you'll notice that these red rings have been created up the spline and these are spline point uh, control points even so we can actually alter these individually to uh, dictate how the fluid will react. So I'm just going to hit play. And as you can see, something's going on. And it's spreading out. And uh, that's as far as it gets. Okay, so let's, um, let's see if we can tweak some of the settings for this thing. Um, we've got these three fields here. Um, voxel strength, axial strength, and radial strength. Now these are global multipliers, so they apply globally to um, <clears throat> this particular spline. Now you can actually alter these fields for each control point. So if we go down to the control point, um, so we can actually, this one selected, you can see this one selected at the top here. And we can actually do the axial radio and vortex for each of these. So we can control them individually. Um, so that's just something to know. I'm just going to concentrate on the global ones for the time being. Um, okay, so what do each of these fields do? Uh, the vortex strength. Um, so it basically um, creates either clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation around the spline's path. So if I crank this up to seven, you can see that it's spinning out that way. Uh, if I do this at minus seven, you can see that it's spinning out the other way now. So that dictates the rotation around the spline. I'm just gonna put this back to one for now. 
Um, the axial strength, um, it basically, positive values create an attraction effect towards the spline and negative settings create a repulsion. So as you can see, they're being pulled towards the spline there. So let's crank this up to maybe two. And it's not quite getting, <laughs> get, getting there up to the next control point, but you can see the effect that it's having. Okay, so let's just put this down to one again for the time being. Now we have this radial strength, uh, and this basically means, uh, same again, it's positive values create an attraction to the spine's control points. So you can see that it's not quite getting up to this control point or being pushed up to the next one. Um, because this force isn't enough. So this, I'd say, is probably the most important setting to get your particles moving along the spline, and then you can tweak everything else with these settings here. So let's crank up the radial strength um, to, say, 3. So you can see they're being, it's being pulled further up now. That's obviously not enough. So let's try 10. Okay. And also, um, we've got this reverse spline here, so I'm just going to reverse it and see if anything happens. There you go, it's reaching the top. I think it was anyway. Yeah, it was. Um, that just reverses the direction of the spline, I think. Uh, if you want to, Basically, if you want to flip the control points, um, the control points order, that's what that does. And if you close the spline, it basically means that it links... And this is a bad example because it's a line, so I'll, I'll show you what that does in a minute. But yeah, we can see we're getting a lot further up now. Um, so let's crank this up to 15 and so see where that takes us. Okay, so the reason that it's coming back down on itself is because, um, because this radial strength is quite high, it's getting to the top here and then being pulled back down towards the control point so maybe there's a little balancing act we can do here so five just doesn't quite seem to be enough so for this shape i'd say 15 is the uh way to go maybe maybe even more nope okay so now we've got this uh radial strength happening um, we can actually tweak some of these to see what the effect of that will be. So the axial strength that we talked about a minute ago, um, so this creates a traction effect towards the spline. So if we give this minus figures, it would push it away from the spline. And as you can see now, we've got this effect happening. If we go negative maybe that's a bit too much so maybe negative two something along those lines but yeah there's a repulsion happening now if we go the other way that's pretty cool but you can see it's not getting as far up anymore so if i put this back down to one see we'll have a nice little surge so i might just actually leave that on zero just to see what happens here yeah, we've got a culmination of stuff at the end there some particles escaped so maybe minus one it will start pushing them away yep so you can kind of see the effect that we get in there okay so okay the vortex strength this is could be quite important so if we crank this up you can see that the rotation it's got more extreme around it so I'm gonna put this at plus two so you can see that this is a rotation in the anti-clockwise direction and if I put a minus in front of this you can see that now the particles have actually started to spin the other way which is great okay so that was a, a quick simple uh, example of that and um, along with the uh, control points as well let me just uh, have a look at this so okay so we've got this top control point selected now for just this control point we could say that the axial strength is zero and look what happens it has a massive effect because i've got it on minus 5000 now so that's a sort of repulsive force so you can see how that you can use a combination of these control points 
all with different settings to get different results. Um, and the radial as well, if I bring that down. So you can start to con really control how this is how this is acting. It's splooshing out there. And again, with the vortex, you can do that for each control point. I've got a repulsion now, so it will do anything to get away from it. So you can see how that would work. Okay, right. Let's get rid of this spline for now. I'll delete that. And what I'll do is I'll create a helix. And I, what I'm going to do is uh, go to my helix. I'm going to say it's on the uh, XZ plane. I'm going to say my start radius is zero. And I'm going to... Let's see, do, 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 do. where's the end radius? Here we go. So let's say this is about 600. Maybe that's a bit too big. 400. Yeah, something like that. And we'll put the height up to about 400 as well. Okay, so now we've got a nice sort of tornado shape, I suppose. Um, and then I'm going to grab the emitter and I'm just going to bring it down here. And maybe angle it slightly. Yeah, in fact, let's bring it back to here and then copy the angle of this. I mean, you don't have to do this, but um, why not, eh? Just so it's sort of on the same kind of trajectory. And I'm just going to pull it down. Okay, so that will um, that will do us, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my D spline. I'm going to Reset all these to defaults again. I think everything was on one by default. Um, Twirl up the control points. Now this is, uh, let's drag this into here. Right, okay, so we've got our control points. And again, like the, um, like the spline emitter, you can actually choose how many control points you want. You can add them and you can, uh, you know, change all the settings for each one. So let's just hit play and see what happens. We can see something's happening. Because remember, this is, um, there's no gravity. There's only the f initial force of the particles that are pushing these up. But you can see that the forces of these are doing something, but not quite enough. So again, the radial strength, I'm going to crank up to maybe five. And now we can see that the radial strength of that is actually having a bit more of an effect. So let's crank this up a little bit more. So maybe 10. There we go, now we're getting a result. A lot more interesting. So we're still getting some escape particles, so maybe I can crank the radial, radial strength up again. There we go, we're getting a bit more of a follow on that now. And, uh, you know, you can see how this would be incredibly useful for... Uh, so let's, uh, let's see if um, cranking it up even more has it even more of a... Okay, we're still getting some escaping particles there. Um, so the vortex strength then. Um, we can change the rotation of this. Now, if you put it up too high, it'll obviously spin the particles outwards. Um, and you'll start losing more and more. So I'm just going to leave this at one for now. The axial strength, which is the force that um, it creates your attraction towards the spline, this might actually help hold everything together. So I'm going to crank that up to two. Maybe a little bit higher. Actually, it's done the opposite, because I think it's accelerating the particles towards the uh, spline. They're being flung too far afield. So if I turn that down, maybe... It's an interesting result. So, we're, yeah, we're getting a little bit more of a thing now. Let's see if we can try moving the emitter and see if this helps. You can see they're being immediately um, accelerated when we get to this point here. So maybe the radial strength is a little bit too much, so maybe drop that down a little bit. In fact, maybe drop it down a lot. Yeah, that could be the way to go. Maybe just five then. 
and pull up the axial strength. Right, that's not enough. Okay, 15 seemed good. But you could see um, how this would be uh, pretty useful. I wonder if we turned the vortex strength down to zero, there wouldn't be so much of a rotational force there. Or maybe I could alter the uh, height of the spline, maybe. So it's a bit more like this. There we go. So th this is pretty much what the D-spline does. It allows you to have particles travel along a, a path. Um, obviously, it's going to take some tweaking. Uh, this effect, by the way, it's the same as the other um, demons. You get the choice of force velocity. I've gone over that before. Um, let's put some more time on the clock as well. So let's say 15. Oh, I've got to pause that. Uh, you can reverse the control points. I don't think that's going to have any uh, bearing on what we're doing. No, it doesn't. Uh, you can close the spline as well. So basically what it does, it connects this point to this point down the bottom, closes the spline up. So now you can see there's a d direct link between these two points now. And there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And <laughs> you can see them wrapping back round and coming back down again. It's cool. So we just turn that off the con the uh, splines. So maybe our control points aren't big enough to envelop what's going on, or maybe the attraction to the spline isn't enough. Hmm. Let's have a look. There we go, we cranked it up to 50 and we're losing less and less now because the force is just too strong. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a general idea, guys. I think you get get the idea of what the D-spline does. You can shove particles along a path. You can really control what, where they go and what they do. So anyway, that, that about covers it. Um, don't forget to check out the Digital Meat website, uh, digitalmeat.uk. Uh, also, follow, follow me on social media. I'll put links in the description for all of those things. Also, uh, it'd be great if you could help uh, Digital Me keep going by um, joining my Patreon. Um, no goals, no rewards, just asking for a dollar a month because it's less of an impact for you guys but could mean everything for Digital Me and myself. So uh, go check that out. There'll be a link on screen for that at the end of the um, tutorial. Okay, cheers, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.